Hey everybody, what's happening? Chris from Game Over Get Outside here. We are down in lovely Lundbrook Falls in Southern Alberta. If it looks like I've been camping for a week, it's because I have. We came down here, probably I guess it hasn't been a week, it's been about five days we've been down here, but I just wanted to do a little bit of a guided tour of the Lundbrook Falls walk-in campsite. So if you're back over that way when you enter, off to the right, you've got all the RV camping where they've got power hookups and everything like that. But over on this side where we are, it is just the walk-in tent sites. And they're quite nice, but depending on what you're looking for, might be nice to have a guided tour of each one of the sites. So let's do it. Oh, did I mention there's no water, by the way? Something to keep in mind if you're coming down here for a bunch of days. On days like this, we've been down here, it's been 35, 36, 37, 38 degrees today, so it is hot. So make sure you bring a ton of water. We've gone through about 40 liters of water, just water like that we got from the tap at our house before we came here, but we've also gone through a ton of bottles of water as well. So make sure you have a lot of water to stay hydrated down here. There is no taps or anything like that. Any taps they do have currently at the moment are closed because of COVID reasons, but the water taps that they do have here are non potable. Anyways, so bring water. Did I mention that already? We'll do a little bit of a guided tour of each one of these campsites just so you can see. Oh, can I give you the pros and cons of each one? So this is campsite number 16. We had some friends of ours in here. We came in here the other night. It's uh, and it was good for them because in the morning when the sun's coming up in the east, You've got this nice little kind of thicket of trees to set your tent up in and it is one of the water access sites. So we've got the river here, which is beautiful. It is nice and cold and on these hot days, I swear this is the only thing that has kept us sane. So definitely if you're looking for one of the sites that has the river access, number 16 is the first one, a little bit bigger has direct access to the cars in the parking lot there. Now that's a benefit because as I said, it is walk-in. So everything that you are gonna hump in here, you've gotta carry on your back or on wheels. So the closer you are to the parking lot, the better. We have good old number 17. This is where we've got our dig set up here. Now, one thing I will say about number 17, it is hot. There is no shade. These trees offer almost no shade. So we've got our nice little tent set up here with our shade tent and our bug net tent. It's kept us cool, except for the river access. That's, I don't know how we would do it. Like I said, we've got a little direct path right into the river there. And then right across the street from us, we've got number 22. Looks like it should be shady, but it's still pretty open. Now, ironically, it was hard to get time booked down here when Lee was actually trying to book, but there's nobody here. There's absolutely nobody. We have the entire little campground to ourselves. This is number 18, by the way. So this one, a little bit of a walkway. This is a nice, it's almost like a double site, right? But I'm assuming it's not. So great view of the water, but I am burning as I'm standing in this campsite. It is hot right here. There's no trees, right? You've got trees up over here, but the rest of the campsite is bare, wide open. So we'll exit here. So this was number 19. So 18 and 19 are together. And then across the street over here, we've got this little campsite here. That one's number 21. It's a nice little campsite. You wouldn't be able to have a very large tent in here, but it is nice and shady. So each one of the campsites actually has its own little fire pit, which is completely encased in steel. And most of them have the grill that actually swivels, but this one's actually broken off. And then way down here, you walk all the way down the path, very, very end of the path. Before you start going up the hill towards the actual walkway to the falls, you've got number 20, which is all on its own here. But I think this one's got a spectacular view. 
check it out. Right across, you've got the cliffs, you've got direct access to the river itself, and the river is beautiful. It is so nice. It's nice to get in. It's nice to just float right down the river. That's We've seen people floating down this all week. Now, the one thing you have to be careful of, there's a lot of rocks down here. There's a lot of big rocks in the river that you've got to be aware of as well. So if you are floating down on anything where your bum is going to sink below your back level, you do need to be aware of those rocks. The rapids that are in there, they're not too terribly fast, but again, if it slams you into a rock, it's not going to be the best day. One of the things you notice when you camp here is there is a lot of foot traffic through here as it is the hiking trail to the actual Lundbrick Falls, which we're going to head over to in a second here to give you a quick view of. But if you're looking for complete privacy, uh, definitely these walk-in campsites, you're basically, like I said, you're right on the trail. So people just have to turn their heads and there you are. This is the alternate access to Lundberg Falls on the west side. Since we're camped on the east side of the bridge, we have to walk across the bridge, which is not far. The actual walk from the campsite itself to the actual falls is probably about five minutes. A little bit uphill, a little bit of downhill. And this is the falls themselves from up here. Off in the distance there, you can see the old train bridge. If you are camping here, you will hear the train every night, every morning. I've noticed that they're polite enough when they're actually tooting the old train horn. When it's early in the morning or late at night, they just give a couple of short little blasts. Whether it's for the camper's sake or who, I'm not sure but it's appreciated, it doesn't do the full long blast. So here we have actual Lundbrick Falls. This is about as close as I wanna go. It's pretty misty in here, pretty loud. My camera is not waterproof. So there you go.